Hello everyone, you are watching ITV Gold and I'm your host Aditi Lama with cameraman Raja Bhatti. Welcome to another edition of Inside Scoop where we bring you prominent personalities from India and here. On the show today, we are so honored and privileged to have the first Muslim American mayor in the United States, the first Pakistani American Muslim mayor in this country as well. We have with us Mayor Sadaf Jaffer from the Montgomery Township in New Jersey. We're so honored to have you here with us. Thank you so much for joining us on ITV Gold Mayor. Thank you for having me. You know, it's amazing. You know, the, the story of you being the first Muslim American, Pakistani American woman to serve as a mayor um, in this country has definitely been one of the highlights of this year. I, I just I just want to ask you that now that we're coming towards the end of this year, mm -hmm. you know, serving a whole year as a mayor and having, you know, that responsibility of being the first woman representing your community mm -hmm. and representing Montgomery Township, how has that been for you? And has it been satisfying to sort of serve the community? I know that means a lot to you. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. So it's been a great year. Yeah. Uh, a lot has happened. I think that. What's exciting for me is presenting a different view of what leadership is. Yeah. And so I do think it's very important for people to see women from the South Asian community in leadership positions and see what we have to offer our communities and the different ideas that we bring. Yeah. Um, I would say that my focus has been to incorporate as many different voices into the decisions that are being made as possible. and you do get to make a big impact when you're in local politics. I think a lot of times people are only thinking about national and international mm. politics and they don't think about all of the day-to-day -day elements of our lives that are actually decided by our local governments. Yeah. And so that's been wonderful. Um, it's A lot has happened. My hope is that I've done good things for the community uh, in my township and also outside of it. I see how important it is for people to see South Asian women, Muslim mm. women in yeah. positions of authority and power and I hope to see many more because those different voices really enrich our government. If I was to ask you perhaps the hardest uh, you know a part of being a mayor and taking up that responsibility mm -hmm. especially in terms of getting more diversity respected in the state mm -hmm. and more you know inclusion happening in our community what would you say would be some of the most challenging aspects you sort of face this year and of course you overcame them mm -hmm. but I would love for you to discuss sure. with our viewers what exactly happens on these local level governments in which changes are being made and it's really important mm -hmm. for somebody to at times stand up and right. make those changes Right. Well, there are many different levels in our mm -hmm. government. Right. So there will be local boards and commissions, like mm -hmm. the planning board, the zoning board, environmental commission. Uh, all of those decision-making boards are appointed positions, but they do make very important decisions in yeah. terms of what is going to be constructed in town and things like that. And I work in partnership with them, but you know those appointments are staggered, and so you have some people who might have been on there for a very long time, mm -hmm. and so it takes a while to slowly get fresh perspectives there. Um, I think that something that people face in a lot of circumstances, a lot of fields, not only in politics, mm -hmm. is that, you know, everyone says, oh, we want diversity, we want, you know, different people in leadership, but then right. sometimes when that happens, mm -hmm. they might not react so well. Yes. Uh, so you have to kind of overcome that. Yeah. And I think that comes from going to as many different events as you can, meeting people, letting them know who you are as a person. I think that that's very important. And luckily at the local level, it's something that's possible. Do you think it was uh, perhaps shocking when you were elected? Did you uh, feel those sentiments? I know the, uh, the news went viral, obviously. Mm -hmm. Being the first for anybody is, <coughs> you know, it's not easy. But uh, talk to me about those moments. Did you actually feel that, wow, they really have to now get used to somebody they're mm -hmm. not used to seeing? Right. sit on uh, you know these boards with them right. and make decisions mm -hmm. decisions from anywhere from you know schooling uh, mm -hmm. to, to infrastructure building mm -hmm. to so many things that actually make a community work right. uh, how was that experience for you well when I was running I didn't really think so much about the fact that I'm South Asian or that I'm Muslim it was just oh I'm, I'm this is my party I'm a Democrat these mm -hmm. are the ideas that I want to implement and I hadn't really considered the broader implications of it or that I might be one of the first or the first to do this f oh, wow. from a Muslim background or from a South Asian background. It wasn't until after it became apparent that I would be the mayor that people started saying, 
hmm, I don't think there has been a woman, yeah. South Asian woman mayor before. I don't think there's been a Muslim woman mayor before. So that's something that I didn't anticipate. It wasn't really on my radar because I'd been so focused on local issues. Yes. So local government and um, you know interest in politics, public service is something that's definitely been a huge part of your life. I kind of want to take us a little bit backwards because I love doing these kind of profile pieces and talk about the fact that you went to G G GW, then you went to Harvard. You're currently also doing postdoctoral uh, research at Princeton. Surely, with you know working, you know doing works in foreign service at George Washington and then going ahead and getting a PhD at Harvard and now working with Princeton, academics and having that impact has definitely been very visible. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about those early interests because you went knowing that you wanted to serve the community when you started at George Washington from mm -hmm. what I read. Mm -hmm. Where did uh, you know that interest to, to give it back to the community come mm -hmm. from for you? And um, you know, going through all these amazing institutions must have had such an, a huge impact on you when you look at education, mm -hmm. when you look at empowering children. So I sort of want to open up that you know that little platform and just discuss sure. on that with you. Yeah. Well, I think I grew up very well informed about politics. Mm -hmm. My parents always watched the news, mm -hmm. listened to public radio and things like that. And one of the funny stories from my childhood is that my dad used to hold mock presidential debates between my brother and myself. Oh, wow. Whenever we had a long <laughs> car drive, he's like, all right, well, why don't you talk about the environment? How are you going to fix it? Um, so I think maybe that planted the seed in my head. But I think I was just always you know, interested in how to help people and make society better. And that's why I thought I wanted to go into diplomacy when mm -hmm. I was at Georgetown. I was in the School of Foreign Service. And, but then I became very interested in my studies and my research on South Asia and Muslim societies and decided to do a PhD. But that interest in public service was always there. And when I moved to New Jersey, uh, because of opportunities, work opportunities at Princeton University. Yeah. That was actually when I first started thinking about running for office at a local level and getting involved with my party. Um, and then I did a program for women from the Democratic Party called Emerge. Um, and that training really helped me to think very clearly about how you run for office. I had never known anybody who'd run for office before. Oh, wow. And so, you know, I was really building from the ground up. And, you know, I am very grateful for the education that I've received. Yes. And I hope that more people who come from an academic background mm. will go into politics because mm. we have had a lot of benefit from society and we've gained research skills, critical thinking skills, and all of those things come in handy when you're, in elected when you're an elected official. You know, I ask you this because not only do I think the institutions are absolutely incredible, we're getting two Ivy Leagues in mm. your palette, one of the biggest political institutions that come mm. from DC, having all of that together, do you think that um, education, when we're just looking at it in a broad term, mm -hmm. how important would you say it is in terms of getting more diverse voices heard mm -hmm. and seen? Mm -hmm. uh, the fact that you have done so much work and research and then you got pulled into even advocating more for our community mm -hmm. was through education. Mm -hmm. Now when you look at education as a mayor, mm -hmm. how much of that plays a role in sort of, you know, um, putting institutions in and figuring out plans that really include everyone. Mm -hmm. What's your take on that? Well, I certainly think education is absolutely essential. It's mm -hmm. the only path towards progress. It's the only way that we can really work towards equity in our society because right. it can level the playing field because we all know that we come into this world with various advantages and disadvantages. Not every child has the same um, privileges or opportunities that others do. But if you have a strong and equal education system, you can help balance those skills. Yeah. And that's certainly, you know, I think that that's the case. I went to the public schools in Chicago and I had an ex excellent education. Yeah. And through that process, I was able to, you know, go to these other excellent institutions. I'm a huge proponent of public education and especially in the ways that it can provide opportunities to those who might not have economic support um, and supports of other ways. I definitely feel hopeful every, anytime I talk to the students in the schools, the high yeah. school students, they're so passionate. Mm. And uh, I'm 
working with some of the high school students and other elected officials to tr try to start a program where we get more connection between high school students and the local government. Um, oh, wow. Because I think that ha those habits, if you learn them early, then mm. you'll always want to be involved. That's but if true. you're not involved when you're younger, you get busy in other parts of your life, and then you might not ever even think about, you know, how do you, how do you serve your local community? So education wow. is, is definitely, I think, the key to everything. It all comes back to that. What about raising cultural awareness in public institutions mm -hmm. such as school? Has that been something that you have uh, focused more on since you did come mm -hmm. as a South Asian mayor? Here? Sure, sure. Well, there a lot of school groups have been very you know excited and mm -hmm. happy, supportive. What we've been doing at the township level is trying to make sure that we honor things like Black History Month, Native American Heritage Month, yeah. Asian American Heritage Month, right. and do different programming related to that. Uh, last year, when I was first on the local government, there was an anti-Muslim bias crime where someone left pork on a Muslim yes. family's yeah. car. And in response to that, I and, and other people from the community started a group called Montgomery Mosaic. And the entire point of that group is that we have meetings some, some of them are social, more lighthearted, like an intercultural holiday party or things of that nature. But then we also have sessions and film screenings on, you know, we showed a sc film screening of the film Waking in Oak Creek about mm. the, you know, attack on a sick man there. Yeah, yeah. And in Wisconsin. Yes, in Wisconsin and various other films where we talk about racism, community building, how can we get past these mm. things. So that's been a very important part of my time. Um, and I hope that those, ripple effects of people coming together and meeting each other continue to grow here. Yeah, I completely agree. I think it's so important for us, especially on the local levels, to interact with as much community as possible. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't start talking about it and start showing up, no one's going to know. You know, when we're talking about the, the topics of race and politics, mm -hmm. um, it's very prevalent. And currently, with what we're seeing in this entire country, even what we're seeing in the state, mm -hmm. um, race and people's ethnicities are going to play a huge role and mm -hmm. they're already playing a huge role. What has been your take on South Asians in politics? I, you know, in the last couple of years we've seen more and more personalities come out and be the part of the Congress, you know, people try to be a part of the Senate, mm -hmm. you know, people working in the administration really trying to make those voices heard, but Unfortunately, we've also seen a lot of hate and discrimination. Mm -hmm. A lot of that has come on the Muslim American community, mm -hmm. the Sikh American community, and other minorities. Mm -hmm. So, you know, being the first Muslim American uh, mayor in mm -hmm. this country, and then seeing all of that happen, especially in this year, what has been your take on this? And where do South, where do South Asians go from there? Mm -hmm. How do we sort of combat that? Sure. Well, it's, it's a very heavy topic because mm -hmm. As a minority in politics, as a South Asian in politics, you probably will face that sorts of that sort of discrimination, and it mm. can be really disheartening. Um, there was there was an article in the Star Ledger that said talked about me as being the first uh, Muslim woman to be a mayor in the U.S. And then after that, I ended up being featured in a couple of Trump-related blogs. That oh and they weren't so happy about it. Yeah, <laughs> like the first yeah. one was happy, the second one yeah. was like, oh, look at this person. And after that, I started getting more like hate messages and yes. things like that on Twitter. You even got in hate mails as well, yes, right? Yeah. yeah, so that was disheartening mm -hmm. and um, and it, it hurts. It just, it does. It's, it's scary to think that people are so negative about you. But one of the things that I've realized is that most people feel secure doing those things from a distance, like mm -hmm. on social media or where they, when you meet people face to face, usually people don't attack you like that. Um, and, you know, I, I don't really know what the answer is. I think social media has so much potential for good, but it also has a lot of destructive potential. And social media is really where you get the most kind of crazy types right. of, of, of course. things. Of course. So I don't really know how we as a society move beyond that. I, we were discussing at a recent Montgomery Mosaic meeting the comments on our local community boards or local newspaper. Mm. And you know, we were talking about an affordable housing project mm -hmm. that's going up and people were saying horrible things that you know, the, we don't want those types of people in this mm. town, et cetera, et cetera. And similarly, I was mentioning that, you know, I follow Governor Phil Murphy on right. Facebook and he had posted 
I think it was last year about Asian American Heritage Month, and he yeah. had all these pictures of the reception that he held of people in their saris mm -hmm. and you know just beautiful things. And the comments were so hateful that yeah. oh, Indians are going to take over New Jersey, yeah. and we don't want you here. Yes, and he it gets was, a lot of yeah. hate on that. Yes, and I think he's doing such great yes. work for all communities. Right. But yeah. But it's sad to yeah. feel like wow, there's people in the state who really don't like us. Yes. <laughs> and what do we do about that? And. I don't know. I mean, I think you just keep building, try to have uh, conversations. And I, I do think that the social media platforms need to be stricter about hate speech right. because otherwise I was going through and, you know, reporting all these comments. Mm. And sometimes they were like, oh, yes, this violates our standards. But I was just thinking, why do I have to do this? Yeah. You know, why do I have to spend days sifting yeah. through these messages? They shouldn't allow that mm. on their platforms to begin with. So I do think minority candidates need extra support. Yeah. And you know, just acknowledging that I understand that you must be tough for you. I'm sure that you're getting a lot of attacks. Do you think uh, people were ready perhaps for the state of New Jersey to, to get so diverse that it did this year mm. with, with you, mm -hmm. with Mayor Ravi Bhalla, mm -hmm. with Guri Garaval, right. with Phil Murphy also winning on the Democratic ticket, right. with so many South Asians appointed from sure. on, school boards, right. you know, even, even Montgomery. Yes. It's not highly South Asian, but it has you now as a right. mayor. Right. How do you think the state has, you know, held that right. together in, the last, sure. in this whole year? Well, I mean, I think actually it was that it's it's too late. In a sense, like it should yeah. have happened a long time long ago time because ago, the yes. community's been here for a long That's time. That's so true. And so when, um, you know, freeholder Sianthi Nara mm. often says this, that she was the first South Asian woman to be on any local board in, mm. I think she said like 2009. Oh, wow. And she thought that that was seemed like very late for that to happen. Yeah. Um, and But you see the progress that we've made in 10 years, mm. and it's amazing. And I think it's because, you know, since I've been in politics, partially I think it's that I've met a lot of people in politics and a lot of them will say, oh, you know, my dad was the mayor of the town or my mom was on the school board growing up. And for immigrant communities, that's not as likely because, yeah. you know, we're not, haven't been here for yeah. that long. Yeah. Really. I think that for a lot of people, obviously, the 2016 election was a wake-up call. Yeah. And they realized that for minority communities, for the South Asian community, to maintain its place or to make their voices heard, they needed to get involved in politics. They That's couldn't true. just say, oh, someone else will do it. And I think a lot of Americans kind of felt like, how bad can it get? You know, everyone's basically the same. And now I think people see that that's not the case. It can get bad. And if you have particular things that you want to make sure, like you want to make sure that immigrants are seen favorably and not yeah. unfavorably, for example, mm -hmm. then you need to get involved directly in your political system. Um, so, you know, one of the interesting pieces of uh, things that I've learned is that, for example, freeholder Santi Nara, yeah. when she first got on her local council, was the first South Asian woman to be elected. And that was only in 2009. So in 10 years, we've made a lot of progress. And I've been involved with a group called ISA, Inspiring mm. South Asian American yes. Women. And it's specifically to get women from our community involved. Because thankfully, and it's wonderful, we have had some South Asian men involved in politics in New Jersey for quite some time. But you know, in terms of what, whether I think it was a shock to the system in New Jersey, maybe for some people. Yeah. But it, the truth is that New Jersey is a very diverse state, hmm. and um, most people just didn't vote regularly. I think that people are realizing that they need to vote. They need to vote every year because there are elections every year, and every you know board, whether it's from school board all the way up to president, hmm. is important because it's all building you know what your life is going to be, what the vision of your community is going to be. Um, I certainly think that we can serve as a model for other states, yeah. and turnout is key. Mm. So last year's election, we had more than a double increase in turnout from the last time it was a midterm election, mm. like a midterm congressional election with no presidential. And to me, that signals that people are waking up, realizing how important it is for them to get out and vote, and then get involved in the local communities and run for office and everything. Mir, what would you say sort of helped you? And perhaps at the same time, I have to bring in Mir Ravi Bhalla because you know, he was the first Sikh American, mm -hmm. the first Muslim American mm -hmm. in the same state. I know mm -hmm. you've also interacted with him. Mm -hmm. I, I know he also went really on, on the ground as well, campaigning. There was mm -hmm. a lot of hate mm -hmm. uh, given to him as well. And you both had to sort of combat mm -hmm. it. What do you think worked for you in the favor of Montgomery? Because it's very interesting. You don't come, this is not 
not a super South Asian mm -hmm. uh, township sure. like Edison or even Hoboken or right. so no, the parts of But even of New Hoboken, Jersey. what's the population of, of South Asians there? It can't be more than 20 or 30 percent. Yeah, but they have a lot, a lot of ethnicities. Sure. Uh, this is a, this was, it was a really interesting mm. one because we wouldn't even have thought a South Asian would, you know, become a mayor of this township, sure. let alone a woman South Asian. Right. So, so what do you think worked for you and perhaps a lot of your community really likes you, even mm -hmm. on social media, there's like mm -hmm. so much love coming to you. Mm -hmm. What do you think perhaps helps you connect with them? Mm -hmm. I know you interact a lot sure. on the level, on the ground yeah. level with your community. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think, you know, as, as, I've, as I've said other times, being South Asian or being Muslim was not the defining reason of why I was running. Hmm. So in your local community, it's, hi, I'm Sadaf and I'm running for office and these are the things that I believe in and I want to build community. I want to work on more transparency, more communication, more diversity and inclusion in general in our boards and commissions and things of that nature. And that speaks to people. It's really outside of Montgomery that it's very, very relevant that I'm South Asian or that I'm Muslim. The yeah. South Asian community and the Muslim community in Montgomery is, are very excited about yes, it. Yes, of course. Um, but when you're in your local community, you need to give people a reason to vote for you that is more about issues mm -hmm. and about values and not necessarily your identity. Um, I, the way that I try to keep as positive, positive an interaction with people from the community is being open mm -hmm. and accessible. Yeah. One of the first things that I did was establish office hours, which the mayors hadn't been doing for a number of years where people can come by and meet me. I try to communicate as, as quick as possible. Um, and I do always try to be respectful because a lot of times when someone comes to you, they have an issue, they're upset. Yeah. You know, they're, something's going wrong. Definitely, it's affecting yeah, them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But you always have to not, you, you always have to think about it in terms of an issue that can be worked on together and mm. not take it personally. I, I try to keep that distance of being like, okay, I understand that you're frustrated. How can we work on this together? Mm. Um, other than that, I, I try to highlight all the community organizations. When I first became mayor, I was asked to swear in the new firefighters in one of the fire companies, and I found out that there had been someone who was serving in the fire company for 65 years. 65? Yes. Wow. And so, you know, I had the township put together a uh, little resolution honoring that person wow. and anybody who had served more than 50 years, and it turns out there were like five people. Who had wow. and so that to be serving yes wow so I think that sort of thing shows that you are recognizing mm -hmm. those organizations you care and I absolutely my number one priority is always to go to any local event or organization that I can because mm -hmm. it means a lot to people when the mayor when is the mayor there. shows up right what kind of uh, events do you think Montgomery as a township is really great at and that mm -hmm. you love attending. And also, sure. if I was to, with this, also ask you, we have elections going on all mm -hmm. over New Jersey right now, mm -hmm. especially in certain so, so other townships, there are mayor uh, elections sure. going on. What do you think are sort of pertinent top issues that you see common mm -hmm. in every township? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, issues that you know for a fact that you, because you spoke on them mm -hmm. and you advocated for them, perhaps you got more votes last year. Mm -hmm. What's your comment on that? I, I think that generally the public wants an uh, open, transparent, and communicative government. So okay. every town or every county is going to have its own specific issues. Whether here, I think oftentimes it's bridges, flooding, mm. property taxes is kind of universal. Um, but if you can speak to saying, your government is here to serve you, how can we help? Yeah. And I want to be that voice for you. People respond well to that. And in this you know, particular time in our country's history, yes. I think showing that you care about diversity mm -hmm. and that you are open and connected to all different types of communities. You're not just your own community, but any different community and you go to their events, you support them, you honor them, yeah. that goes over very well because people are a little bit scared, they're a little bit unsure of what's mm -hmm. happening. Um, so I think that sort of leadership is important. and. Thankfully, I so far have not engaged in any sort of negative campaigning. Oh, wow. I've okay. always been very positive, and mm. my, that's my advice to everyone, that most people are sick of negative politics. Mm. They don't want to hear you talk about how horrible the other person is. They want to hear, why are you worth voting for? Because if everything becomes negative, then 
understandably, people shut down. They're yeah. like, I don't even want to engage in this. I don't even want to bother voting. Everyone's yes. just attacking each exactly. other. We have to try to move past the ugliness and say, okay, we're all here. We all think we're doing what's best for our community. Mm -hmm. We might disagree, but I'm not going to say that you're a horrible human being. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to say, this is what I want to do, and this yeah. is what I think would be better. Wow. So you're basically saying, and I actually think it's so interesting, mm -hmm. It has been a, a year full of negative campaigning now right. from both sides sure. that we see. It's just, mm -hmm. a, you know, back and forth between mm -hmm. Republicans, Democrats, mm -hmm. state versus local, sure. you know, state versus federal. Mm -hmm. But you were saying the best way to perhaps combat it would be you go back to the candidates, you go back to the mayor, and you just basically work on what they're doing for mm -hmm. their townships yes. or what they're doing for their works. Am I understanding you right? Certainly. And as a candidate, I think yes. that that speaks to people because we don't want anyone to get turned off completely or become cynical. Because so true. if you're cynical, if our population is cynical, then only the worst people go into politics. Hmm. And that was, when I was first thinking about going into politics, it was like around 2013, 2014. Hmm. Yeah. And everyone was like, why would you do that? You're in higher education, hmm. you're in such a nice world. Yeah. Why would you go into politics? It's so dirty and everything. Um, and then when I actually got there, I realized most elected officials are good people mm. who want to do the best thing for their community. Mm. But if we keep pushing that narrative, then yeah, only the worst people will go because yeah. only the then people who want power just for the sake of power will go. If we, if we actually say no, public service is a good thing and I might disagree with someone, but I at least respect that they are willing to do it. Yeah, you know, it's so interesting. A lot of uh, when we interact with the youth, from our community, mm -hmm. the entire South Asian diaspora, the number one thing that we are seeing now, it's it's the fact that we we, we want people to be able to have a conversation, mm -hmm. and and we just want people to understand what the issues are, mm -hmm. and. The, the greatest thing I see now with the youth of our generation is the fact that some of them are now going into education mm -hmm. and they want to go to these, you know, amazing pristine universities like you did mm -hmm. and serve back to the community mm -hmm. because they feel that that's how they're learning mm -hmm. how to be role models or how to function and then actually give back to politics. Do you think that that could be a really great step for the youth that's watching this mm -hmm. right now? Definitely, I think public service can and should be done by everyone. Mm -hmm. And it all depends on your levels. I know a lot of people are very interested in their professional careers yes. outside of politics and government, and that's mm -hmm. wonderful. But you can be a doctor and you can still serve on your local health board, and yes. we have many of those. Or you can be an engineer and you can serve on the planning board. Or you can be, you know, a professor and you could be the mayor. Um, but you know, there are think about ways that you can incorporate some sort of public service into your life, no matter what your career goal is, and it's just very rewarding. And our society will only pro like progress based on that work that's done by everyone. You know, Mira, I know we're coming a little bit close to the ending of the interview, but I have this one topic that I really want to discuss with you, which is you have this beautiful story in your own house which talks about engaging two different communities, respect to all ethnicities, mixed marriage, and really, you know, uh, making a living and a life which is truly American, which is, you know, um, an amalgamation of all cultures put together to the best mm -hmm. thing. Uh, your story with your husband is absolutely beautiful. Oh, you. And, you know, you both started from Harvard, and then you both moved here. You have a beautiful daughter. How has the support of the family and having mm -hmm. that aspect in your life, which is all about diversity and inclusion, sort of formed you as a person? Well, I could not do the work that I'm doing without my husband. He mm -hmm. has to take on so many responsibilities, extra responsibilities, because of the work that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. As I said, I'm the mayor and I try to go to as many events as I can, but that means I'm not there a lot of times in the evenings or mm -hmm. on the weekends, I have to be gone. So absolutely, without his help, it would be impossible. And I think that's probably the case for most elected officials, especially those with children, that you need to have a support system, a partner, family that's willing to support you. Um, I think, you know, it's true that America is to some degree about these communities coming together, yeah. building a future that's different. Uh, but that's, I think, the case in a lot of places. And you see intercultural marriages even mm -hmm. within cultures within South Asia. You right. know, if someone's from yes. one state and they speak one language mm -hmm. and someone's from another state, they speak another language, for example, there are, is still a lot of un intercultural learning there. I think the biggest thing that I've learned is Every, every marriage is an intercultural marriage because every family has their own culture. That's true. This is how we do, we do things, we do things this way. And I think a lot of times when people get married, they're like, oh, you do, 
why do you do that? This is how we do it. Yeah. And so you have to negotiate that. Yeah. But it's wonderful to have a partner who is very thoughtful mm. and uh, is able to have a conversation about how is it that we want to be intentional about what we're building in our family? Yeah, and that's such a, you know, I feel like it's such a great, strong picture coming from a mayor to really represent an inclusive net for all. Um, you know, when we're looking at this intercultural connections that we're mm -hmm. talking about, for, for the youth watching, for parents watching, this is something that we always also talk about on the channel is openness mm -hmm. to having more cultures among South Asians and being mm -hmm. okay with that. Mm -hmm. When you look at your daughter who's being raised, you know, with, uh, with one non-South Asian and mm -hmm. one South Asian, mm -hmm. and then you also are half Yemeni and half mm -hmm. Pakistani, mm -hmm. How would you sort of explain the, the cultural richness she comes from, mm -hmm. you know? And how do you explain uh, what mom is and what dad is and, and how you come together and mm -hmm. are a responsible community person? I know she's very right. young. She, yeah. She's very young. Yeah. But, I mean, look at, uh, like, uh, first of all, look at the DNA she's coming sure. with to Harvard parents. Um, but at the same time, uh, there's a lot of culture she's coming with. Mm -hmm. How do you see her forming sure. as a person? Yeah. Well, it's... I think that is, it's a very hard thing to some degree because yeah. I think that we assume that our kids are gonna grow up with the things that we grew up with. Yeah. And we've all seen that tension with our own parents where they think, well, you know, we, this is how we do things yeah. and why do you have to do things differently? I think that she is getting the best of a lot of different worlds. Yeah. Uh, she listens, my husband is very, uh, skilled and talented Irish music player. Wow. So she listens to a lot of Irish music and then when she's in the car with me she listens to a lot of body Bollywood music um, and she you know we've put her in ballet, we've put her in uh, Bhangra and hip-hop wow. class so she gets she's playing piano she's so she gets a little bit of a lot of things we'll see what strikes her interest and what yeah. she decides she wants to do but I think that all of us come from complex histories mm. and people have been migrating, moving around, intermarrying in different ways for a very long time. So the entire notion of a pure identity is always, it's, it's not, nobody has a pure, pure X identity. That's so true. Identity is always in formation, just as it was for our parents and for their parents. And, you know, every generation will think about themselves differently. So, you know, I, I don't know how she understands it in terms of her identity. She's five. Yeah. So she will sometimes say, I think she thinks about her having black hair. She'll be like, oh, they, they have black hair too. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I have black hair like my mommy. I'm like, yes, you do. Yeah. So she's kind of noticing these differences, these yeah. similarities. Um, but we'll see growing as she grows up what elements of what culture speak to her and that are important to her. Um, it's all... It's all a work in pro progress. I feel like a child is an entire universe and you know, so complicated and it's beautiful to be a part of shaping that to some mm. degree, but a lot of it is also what's, com what's from within. So. You, know, you know, having all of the professional uh, you know, knowledge and degrees that you have, plus being the mayor, uh, being South Asian, what are your hopes with your daughter when she's growing up and she's going to see her mom stay in public service. Mm -hmm. I really hope you move ahead and ahead. We will be supporting you. How do you like hope she is formed as mm -hmm. a person? And, and you know, your and Dan's, both mm -hmm. of you, like what are you ha really, you know, hopes for, from a culture, sure. you know, from, from a daughter who's really mm -hmm. sort of now being raised in a bilateral culture, mm -hmm. let's be honest. She's yeah. gonna have a beautiful upbringing with so much knowledge. What are your hopes? Well, first I hope that we do enough to protect the environment, that mm. she can breathe clean air and drink clean water. Yes. That's the most important thing because that is certainly what scares me the most about the future for her. Mm. I hope that she is in a society that respects women, that allows them to be leaders. It has been really nice to see her reaction to my position as mayor because she will say, well, I'm gonna be the mayor when I grow up. Wow. And, uh, and you know, I know this shouldn't be so funny, but it's very funny to me. One day, like one day, my husband, sometimes my husband obviously also has meetings and conferences obviously, and things to go yes, to. Yeah. So he had to go to a meeting in the evening and she said, why do you have to go to a meeting? You're not the mayor. And I was laughing because I'm like, he's a professor. He has a very wow. important career. But to her, it's like the mayor is very, very wow. important. Um, and, I, and I think it's good for her to grow up with that sense of her mother having a, an important role in wow. society. So I hope that she keeps that confidence in herself. Um, 
I don't know. I, I, I hope that she gets the education that she needs and that she grows up in a more egalitarian society. Yeah. I think that our society has become very stratified between the wealthy and the poor and we need to give more resources to everyone because that's, that's, a, that's a shame and we're missing out if we're not you know, allowing everyone to rise together. Yes, I really respect you for your environment um, comment. I think it's so, so incredibly important for us to make sure that our future generations are safe. Mm -hmm. You know, when we are also growing older, we want to have a plan to live. Yes. And it's so, so important. You know, Mary, it was so great talking to you here at Montgomery Township uh, Municipal Office. What can we look forward to with this year ending mm -hmm. with your office and also next year? I know 2020 is going to play a huge role everywhere, mm -hmm. general elections. Mm -hmm. um, but for you, what are some of the key things that, that you're focused on right now? I think it's building a bench, building a network of especially women, mm -hmm. uh, minorities who feel empowered to serve on local boards and commissions, to run for office, to make their voices heard, and to know that the government is there to serve them. Mm -hmm. When I was first running, someone asked me, you know, we do have a significant South Asian community in the town. Mm -hmm. How come we never see them at government meetings? We never see them anywhere. And I yeah. said, if you go to a room and you don't see a single person who looks like you there, you start to think maybe I don't belong here, you know? And so it's important that those of us who are there make it clear that you do belong here, you're welcome. And, and that's what I, I hope to see that continue to grow in Montgomery Township and throughout our state. Wow, absolutely beautiful. Any messages for the upcoming general elections? Um, you know, I love asking the mayors mm -hmm. to give a comment for all our viewers on voter education and the importance of voting. Mm -hmm. But anything else you can, you know, your comments, your personal sure. comments on what you're hoping from these elections and what you hope the, the residents of New Jersey do mm -hmm. in terms of that. I, I think turnout is yes. that the, the most key mm -hmm. element, that we need to keep the momentum going because if all of our voices are heard, then we can get the best elected officials for ourselves. And even if we don't, then we can be empowered to go meet with them in their offices. So take some time out of your day, your life. I know everyone's schedule is busy, but take some time out of your life and put a little bit of it towards public service because that will pay dividends um, over, over generations. Well, it was amazing having you here on the show with us. One last question, a message out to all the South Asian youth watching you. You are such a role model for so many South Asian women, including myself. Message out to them. And also, we would love to get a message out for the Muslim American community too, sure. since we have you here. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so I would say that it can be a difficult time right now. I know, especially I hear a lot about bullying in schools of different communities. It's hard to be different. It is hard to be a minority. And I don't want to you know, underestimate that. But we do have a political system that works. And I think that my election shows that. It's not perfect. But the fact that someone from a minority community, a South Asian woman, a Muslim woman, can get elected in a town that's not majority South Asian, that's not Muslim, speaks to the fact that if you get involved, you can make a difference in a short period of time. And so if you, you, know, if you feel cynical, realize that that's actually what people want you to feel. So go out there, vote, uh, be involved in your communities, and realize that you belong here just as much as anyone else. Thank you so much, Mira. This sure. is amazing, amazing. Yeah. And this was none other than Mira Sadab Jaffer from the Montgomery Township. We are here actually in the courtroom. We're very thankful to the municipal offices here for allowing us to shoot here. As she said, we all belong here. Go out, go vote, get educated, learn things. And obviously, you can contact Mira Sadaf Jaffer because she has office hours in Mangari Township. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Inside Scoop. I'm Aditi Lama with Kamal Rajabati, signing off. Thank you so much.